Hi, this is Christian Shaw from Soundflow. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at how you, with custom scripts in Soundflow, can access specific tracks within your session by name and then perform custom commands on those tracks. So in, um, in this session here, I'm using the memory locations from 1 to 10 to trigger different views of my session. So for instance, number one is my mix view with all the VCA faders. I have all the aux buses and my stems on number two. And then there are specific memory locations for Foley, for dialog, for sound effects, and for music. This is a way to more quickly navigate through the whole session and to keep focused on the task that I'm currently doing. But then when I get to the final stages of a mixing session, uh, sometimes I'd like to be able to quickly turn on and off the input monitoring of my stems. Let's say I've already printed the stem tracks. So to start with, I'm listening to the printed tracks. But in case I have something I'd like to change, I'd want to quickly turn the input monitoring for the stems on. So I'll be listening to my actual changes as I make them. For this, I needed to create a quick way to make sure my stem tracks are shown and selected, and then have the input monitoring toggle to on or off, no matter where I am in my session. So for instance, if I'm on my dialog view, I would want a command that shows my stems, selects them, and then presses shift I to toggle on or off the input monitoring. Let's take a look at how we can implement something like this in Soundflow. Here we are in the Soundflow app, where you can see the final custom command that I already created. In the categories view over to the left, I've created a custom command package called Pro Tools Master. This is where I keep all my custom scripts that I've made for working in Pro Tools. This script I've called Stems Toggle Input Monitor, and I've assigned two triggers for it. On my X key XK60, I've assigned key 76, to which I've detached a little physical label so I can easily find the command. And in the case I don't have my X key with me, I've also assigned it to the F13 button on my regular keyboard. Now let's take a look at the script itself. All scripts in Soundflow are written in a language called JavaScript. We chose JavaScript because it's probably the most popular programming language in the world. It's cross-platform, and it has a great community online, so you can easily find forums and tutorials to help get you started. Let's go through the final script line by line to get an overview of what it does, and then we're going to see how it works in Pro Tools. We'll dive deeper into the scripting in another tutorial. In this line too, we're defining the names of the five stems that we want the command to act upon. In these lines here, we're telling Soundflow to show our stems if they aren't already showing by invoking the action track show by name and passing it the names of the stems that we want it to act upon. In these lines, we're telling Soundflow to select tracks by name and passing it the same names that we passed before. In this last action, we're telling Soundflow to simulate a keyboard press of the keys Shift I. Shift I will toggle the input monitoring of the selected tracks in Pro Tools. So since we've already selected the tracks, this will toggle the input monitoring of our stems. Here we are back in Pro Tools, where I've activated my dialog set of tracks. So let's see what happens when I press the F13 key. So I can see how in the background Pro Tools showed the stems, selected them, and as we can see here, it also pressed the Shift I and activated the input monitoring. We can see here it doesn't matter on which track I am when I invoke the command, the stems will be selected and the input monitoring will be toggled. This also works if some of the stems are already shown or if they're already selected. So this is a really safe and stable way for us to invoke this command no matter where we are in the session. It's just one click of a button and then we can easily move on with the task that we were doing. Obviously, this could also be applied to stuff like toggling the mute, the record, or the automation state of the track, or anything else that you'd like to be applied to a specific set of tracks.